Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is ESPN college football expert, insider, and analyst, college football national champion at BYU, Trevor Maddich, for another Maddich Monday. Trevor, which movie best describes the 2017 BYU football season for you? I think maybe it's a wonderful life. I think as bad as things feel, uh, you have a dream and you realize they might be even worse. So maybe we can look at the positive that way. Are you saying it could be worse for BYU football? Yeah, well, they, they, they could not have a win. You know, they could have quit, and they haven't quit, and they at least have had a little bit of success this year. Uh, this is a season that, as bad as it is this year, I think will lead to some pretty good things next year because you've got a lot of guys that have had to play because of injuries and other reasons uh, that I think will help them. And I think going into this offseason, they'll have the best offseason they've ever had because you never want to go through this again. And that's the hope, and that offseason is going to be without Tanner Mang. We'll discuss that in a moment. But if this season can leverage itself into success later, then maybe, maybe it was worth it. But if BYU kind of struggles next year, then it wasn't worth it and there are bigger issues. So you feel like BYU is going to bounce back from this and next year be better because I think be better would be go to a bowl game next year, right? Yeah, be better would get back to a bowl game. If they can do better than that, that's great. But in order to be better, they've got to catch a few passes. In order to be better, they've got to be more efficient on offense. And there's a lot of, uh, I think, uh, criticism of offensive coordinator Ty Detmer and his style of offense and his play calling. But the truth of it is this offense will work as long as it is executed at a decent level. It doesn't have to be uh, a high level. It doesn't have to be superior execution. Just execute pretty well, and you'll see a lot of good things happening with this offense. Uh, I was talking with David Shaw, uh, Stanford's head coach, about why he runs a pro-style offense, essentially, in an era of up-tempo spreads. And he said in the up-tempo spread, you have a lot of plays that aren't very good for the defense that's in front of you. And you try to make up for that by running a ton of plays. Plus, in the up-tempo spread, you can't coach as much on the field in terms of individual technique, you know, how to play the game of football. You're going so fast in practice that you just get it all on tape and you coach in the meeting room. But with a pro-style offense like they run at Stanford and like Ty Detmer wants to institute here, you slow it down, the pace, but every play is maximized for the defense that's in front of you because the nature of what the quarterback does with his checks, the nature of what the receivers are supposed to be doing. So instead of running 85 plays and 20 of them aren't good, you're running 65 plays, and they're all the right play for the moment. This is the way it's supposed to work if everything's going as well as it should be. And next year will be their true second year in this system. And I think that uh, next year we'll be able to judge it better than we've been able to this year. It's a Maddich Monday with ESPN's Trevor Maddich. We saw some good things on offense from BYU on Saturday night against Fresno State. In fact, BYU outgained the Bulldogs in that loss. But that's the key word, a loss, and another one for BYU. So what are your emotions about this team at this point of the season? Well, the emotions right now are kind of like a – well, about the team, it's different. You know, the team, I see the fight, and I see how they care for each other and their coaches. You can see that in the way they play games. You can also see that they're frustrated. Uh, but it's tough to fight through this kind of a thing. But overall, the emotions of watching this season – the only way I can really describe it is it's like a, a cheese grater on my eyeball. It's been, <laughs> Whoa. It's been hard. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> oh. or, uh, yeah, well, figuratively, you know, I didn't actually do that to see yeah. what it really felt like I do feel. <laughs> well, then, well then, BYU TV going to the next level. My goodness. Okay, Tanner Mangum has an Achilles injury. We don't know to what extent, but, you know, it, it, it looked bad. He, he is out uh, for the rest of the year, and – likely spring ball and into the summer we'll see but what does that mean for BYU's quarterback position in the final three games of the regular season here well I, it'll give Bo, it'll give Bo Hodge it'll give Critchlow some some time to work some good quality game experience not only make them better because what it will do is increase competition uh, in the off season now whenever whenever Tanner gets back I don't know I mean this injury sounds like it's one that'll be a full six months uh, and so spring ball, he won't be available, I'm sure. But once they get into the summer and get rolling, there'll be some very good competition. And competition makes everybody better. 
that, that's kind of an important thing. So this year, from a standpoint of any you know, goals from bowls and things like that is already a lost year when it comes to those goals. So that's part of what they'll be able to accomplish now is head into next year uh, with, with better competition in the offseason and into next summer. It looked like he was starting to find a bit of a rhythm between the San Jose State game. Yes, I know, terrible opponent. But he got into a rhythm at Fresno State. What did you see from Tanner Mangum that encouraged you that he can be a BYU quarterback that can produce good numbers. Well, he was he was hitting receivers. Uh, he was hitting them mostly short, and that's that's a problem. But there were too many drops, and he was still leading the team even though there were so many drops and there were mistakes that would stall out drives. And I like that. I mean, it's easy for a quarterback to get on a roll and hit all his passes and find the open space and really feel it. It's really hard on a quarterback when things aren't going well. And when you have a lot of self-inflicted problems, now how do you lead? I think that's one of the great things about Tanner Mangum is that he is such a quality man. I mean, he he's one of my favorite human beings in college football. He he is a quality man, and you, you see that on the field with his leadership. Even though you don't see the production, and the production is some his fault, but it's not all his fault. You know, again, the receivers. We've talked about this for a while. The receivers need to toughen up. I mean, really, I think I think they'd be best off if instead of having the receivers. Um, in spring practice compete on the field running routes for who the starter is, I think they should take them three at a time, lock them in a closet with baseball bats. One will come out. Okay, that guy's over here. Put three more in there. One what is this, the out. dark night? <laughs> That's right, because they need guys that, that, are, that are just tougher, that play tougher, that, that fight harder. And, you know, with all the drops, I mean, at this time of the season, there's no reason in the world to drop so, so many passes. It's frustrating. Now, there are, there are rays of hope. Bushman has been fantastic. Shumway has shown some good pow. Pow has done some good things. You know, there, there have been some, some rays of hope. But ultimately, Tanner Mangum, because that, that's kind of what the, what the question is here, uh, Tanner Mangum in a, a, a place where he could be pointing fingers, a place where he could be making demonstrations on the field and overtly chewing out and showing up his receivers and other people that make mistakes. You know, he's leading. He's not denigrating. And I tell you, it, it, it's a hard thing to do, and I think it speaks to Mangum's character. Three games left, no bowl game, first time in uh, 13 years. Uh, what is BYU playing for now, in your opinion? Each other. You know, that, that's really what it amounts to. Um, it's the guy on the right and the guy on the left and for the sacrifice that you've already made. You know, you know how hard your teammates have worked and how much they hurt because of injuries that they're playing with. A lot of those injuries won't be healed until the off season, and I'm not even talking about ones like, like Tanner's. I'm just talking about the wear and tear of football. And when you see that, you want to make sure, if you love your teammates, that you validate their sacrifice even though that you're not getting success on the field. Trevor, what do you feel like is the number one reason BYU is 2-8 and eight at this point? You know, there's, there's a combination of, of three things, I think. One of them is offensive inefficiency. There, especially in the passing game. The passing game has just been, it's been abysmal. It's just been abysmal. No other real way to describe it except cheese grater on the eyeball. The second thing is the schedule has, was a perfect storm early to maximize the problems that the offense had. And so any, any issue that was it, that, caused them trouble on the field. The defenses that they faced made it worse. Of course, that doesn't account for Utah State. That doesn't account for East Carolina. And really, even for Fresno State, which is a, good, which is a pretty good football team. So those two things. And then injuries. Injuries have been epic uh, for the, the Cougars this year in positions where they can't really afford it. You know, I mean, and losing Francis Bernard for the season to personal issues, the linebacker, that really kind of set things off on a bad tone. And so I think those three things, offensive inefficiency, the schedule, and injuries, have created a perfect storm for the Cougars. Just a couple of weeks left in the regular season, then the uh, conference championships, and then we'll know who the playoff teams are. So who are your top four teams at the moment in college football? My top four teams are Georgia number one, Alabama number two, Notre Dame number three, and Clemson number four. 
Uh, I've got Oklahoma at number five. I'm a little worried about them because their offense is good enough to put them at number one. I mean, their offense is insane. They've got the most effective quarterback in the country in Baker Mayfield behind an offensive line that's probably one of the three best offensive lines in the country. So it's not just a matter of Mayfield scrambling around and extending plays. They've got an offensive line that can actually protect him in the pocket and can open holes for their running backs. So the problem is the defense is, you know, they're, I don't, what, what's going on with the Oklahoma defense? I mean, in some ways, the Oklahoma defense is the BYU offensive defenses. <laughs> and so, you know, so I've got them at number five. And the reason I have Georgia at number one over Alabama has nothing to do with Alabama's, um, you know, with, with the power ranking. I think actually – Oklahoma, well, check that. I think Alabama is a better team than Georgia. The thing is, though, Georgia has a better resume with that win up at Notre Dame. Um, You know, they've just beaten more teams that will probably finish ranked than Alabama has. Great stuff, Trevor. We appreciate the time, as always. And uh, let's do it again next Monday, shall we? Yeah, I'll I'll have the cheese grater ready, and we'll uh, (laughs) we'll, we'll talk about, uh, I don't know, pizza. (laughs) Thanks, Trevor. Bye, guys.